intern being <laughs> sad. <laughs> this is called Pieced Together. I am an immigrant. I had an easier time immigrating than most people. But I moved from Brazil 15 years ago and I went into college with a whole bunch of people that I didn't really know and that they were already going, you know, two and a half years into it. And I had a real hard time adjusting to the language and the culture and everything else that comes along with it. Mostly growing up until I was the age of 20 until I came out. Um, it was pretty much me still trying to hide that part of me. Um, so, you know, it wasn't part of any community really until I came out and realized that, you know, I was part of the gay community. I look different and I had different opinions and I was very quiet too, so I never said I never expressed myself. I always felt like I had to be on my best behavior. But I was very sensitive because I felt different than everybody else. And I thought I looked different than everybody else. Then um, I was very sensitive about other people. It was always very discomforting just being so different. I just felt like uh, I, a lot of people couldn't understand me. I still feel that way. Yeah. You know? That's why I'm an artist. I grew up with uh, eight brothers and sisters, and I was sure I was adopted because they just seemed to know what to do, and I always felt kind of on the edge. I often felt like I was just a little different than other kids. Uh, growing up and and even sometimes as an adult now, you know, I mean we are all we are a set of unique circumstances, right? So I think uh, we have to let go and let ourselves be that and understand that other people are that but when I forget that and I forget to connect with people that's when I feel a little bit outside. The first time I can remember feeling that way was when I switched schools in the fourth grade and I had gone from a school where everybody was kind of eccentric I guess. It was a school where people just kind of did their own thing and didn't have to sit in desks all the time and then suddenly I went to this private Catholic school where everybody was wearing uniforms and sitting in a desk and uh, I was real tall, awkward, very you know effeminate and suddenly I'm in the midst of these uniformed people who were all kind of conforming to this very rigid set of rules and I didn't even know the rule book so I wasn't following any of them and I, I knew that I didn't fit in at all. Uh, it was kind of a very strange awakening to go from you know one school year where I felt like I was so popular and happy and then the next year suddenly it was the total opposite. I grew up in different countries. I was a diplomat brat. And I often felt like, just because of the language and the culture of wherever we happened to be, I wasn't quite right. Um, I was often pudgy, and that felt odd in a place where people were thin. Um, and then, probably as an adolescent, just feeling like, no, no, I'm in the wrong place. These are the wrong parents. These are the wrong friends. This is the wrong time. It was the 60s. Actually, it was when I was living abroad, and I hadn't really noticed it. I was, I was living in Asia, and I thought I was just part of everything and everyone, and I was at work, and um, it was a big, exciting day, and some photos were taken, and I got the photos back, and all of a sudden I realized that I was much taller, and I was you know, paler skinned and, and just very different from the people that I was with and yet I felt so part of the moment and then when I saw the pictures I was shocked at, at the disconnect between the way I felt and the way I kind of appeared. I um, 
grew up in a working family and went to a private school with lots and lots of rich kids. Um, and it definitely felt like I was the scholarship kid on campus a lot of the time. Um, and you know, like I have some lingering issues with that, but for the most part, like I came into my own, I focused on my schoolwork, got there. Having a lot of poverty problems and economic problems as a child and then watching television and not, not measuring up to the Brady Bunch and if anybody remembers the Brady Bunch. Um, and moving a lot and, and not fitting into different new schools and things like that, that, that happened. Not to sound terrible, but at home, I'm the only artistic person in my whole family, and uh, it's really hard sometimes when you know the people that love and care about you and support you the most, you know, look at your materials as junk or a waste of space, or that you know there's better things to do with that money. Um, but you know, it makes me happy, so I do it anyway. I try not to take what they say personally. When I was little and people would um, would make fun of me for being Asian. Um, and then, you know, also when I was in grad school and I was old and people would not necessarily make fun of me but not include me. In my family, love my family, they're awesome, but they're, they're, I'm the youngest of four and oftentimes I felt like I was the stupid one and I was meant to feel that way sometimes. It was usually in jest, but when you're little that doesn't mean that you don't think that that's really true. And I remembered always feeling like I wasn't smart enough, I didn't read enough, I didn't know politics enough, and so I couldn't participate. So that was kind of hard. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think I've actually worked a lot during my life to make that not true. Just find something in yourself that you like and, and like yourself the most. Find a way to create, just even if it's writing, drawing, um, doing puzzles your own way. I would tell them that they will find a place where they belong. There are people for everyone. Be yourself no matter what and just find whatever makes you the happiest. Take what you can do, take what you like to do, and you'll be alright. Find kind people, find mentors, find people to connect with that you can lean on and, and who will help reflect your beauty. The people that are trying to make you feel that way want you to feel that way so they can feel more powerful. So don't let them. There's people out there for everybody and there's communities there for you and you know, find them and have fun. Be persistent, know what your goal is and march along. Just go forward and make it happen because it will happen. Just remember that you're here for a purpose. Um, you have very special talents and you may not think about them or know them right at the moment, but one day you're going to. Put your heart into it and show up for yourself. I think it's, it's really about where you are in the world and not where you feel like you fit or not. You just gotta realize everyone's got their ish and you gotta do you. Just stick to the stuff that makes you happy because that's all that matters in the end. When someone says something to you or tells you something about yourself, you ask yourself three questions. Um, is it true, not true, or maybe true? And a lot of times when it's something that's said with malicious intent, it's not true. But sometimes when somebody says something to you that hurts and makes you feel bad about yourself, when you ask those three questions, you can learn from those things. I think you have to find something that you can take pride in 
within yourself. And for me, it was art. I had a great art teacher. Being able to channel a lot of those feelings into art made a huge difference for me. And so that's really why we started this, this project, to try and help inspire other people to do the same thing.